And I will ask uh, Linda to respond first to this next one. And we'll have one more from the floor, and then I'll go back to questions from the panelists. It often seems our boards have trouble working together. The warrant article regarding setbacks for pools on small in-town lots is an example. Can you tell me your position on this and how the HDC and planning boards could have worked together more successfully? They could have worked together more successfully, and that's precisely what the notation in the town warrant is from the planning board. The planning board wanted the proponents and the opponents to get together and craft good zoning law. I emotionally agree that seeing a pool next to a 200-year-old home is alien to me, and I'm not in favor of that. But I'm also not in favor of the creation of bad zoning law, and this particular warrant article, as currently written, affects pools all over the island, not just the old historic districts. It's poorly written, and it has unintended consequences. What we'd like to see happen is everybody take a step back, make good zoning law that's supported by both the opponents and proponents, and let's pass something that's not going to have unintended consequences. So yes, emotionally I'm in favor. Um, from a rational uh, zoning point of view after working with the zoning bylaw for 27 years, I am not in favor of this particular bylaw and hope to see it not passed and have everybody work together to create something that is good. Actually, uh, Linda, you proposed that language in a motion. Not me, not the well, I've got it. I've got it right here. Motion to endorse that language into the warrant, Williams. No, this is from the H. Excuse me, Linda. Excuse me. Excuse me. Of a warrant article. Order, please. please don't tell okay. me that something this is the kind of thing that happens at yeah. at the HDC, folks. I've been to the meetings. It turns into an interruption after an interruption after an interruption. And I think it's time to stop. And, okay. I'm sorry, I'll let, let you oh, yeah. go, and then I'll give Linda 30 seconds to respond. Oh. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go. Go ahead. Go. Oh, okay. Uh, and, uh, I'm meaning it's uh, in reference to the, the pools and, and the article. I, I don't like to cross things, but uh, myself, look, looking at I have an objection to that because the rules state that if you want to put a four to six foot board fence around your property, as long as it's not on the street side of the property, you're allowed to do so. And that way, everything that comes before the Historic Commission has to be visible from the street or traveled away. And a lot of times it's not. And if a man has a backyard and he wants to put in a swimming pool, say, he, uh, I don't see any reason why he can't, as long as he's going to screen it from the street. I have no problem with it. But I don't think they should make it, make it, make it, make it a just law that is 20 feet from all lot lines, because you'll never have any pools in the old historic area. And I think the people have their rights some way, too. I use common sense with it. Thank you. Thank you, John. I'll give you 30 seconds. Okay. I did endorse putting forth a warrant article on behalf of the HDC. I did not endorse that language. I do not endorse that language now. I think it's poorly written. It's hastily written. There wasn't enough public vetting. And I think that component was missing. And I think we need to back up and create a good zoning bylaw that everybody can support. So yes, I do agree that we need something in the old historic districts only. But I have an issue with the way this particular bylaw is written. Thank you. Um, I'll ask John McLaughlin to respond to this, which is the last one that we'll take from the floor at this point. We'll take, go back to the panel. Are you familiar with the rural road um, guideline, and is the HDC using these in their deliberations? Yes, uh, being a member of the planning board, yes, I understand the rural roads concept very well. It gives you choices of uh, if you're going to subdivide a lot and you're going to have a road going into it, you can use you can use using the macadam, the tar, you can use brick, you can use a gravel gravel road if you want. You have it's the uh, applicant's option to use that. And in certain areas, I believe you should keep pristine, whether dirt roads and whether uh, and gravel roads. But down downtown areas, most likely you cobblestone the tar. Thank you. One of my favorite sections of the 
guidelines. The rural road guidelines. Um, don't build on the top of a hill. Use natural um, or gray paint or leave it natural to weather. Uh, dirt roads, not cutting them all the way open as far as the planning board likes to have them cut open. I think it's a great bylaw and sometimes we have been fairly lax in addressing certain uh, projects in the rural areas and I think we need to go back to looking at the rural road guidelines rather than just giving lip service to it. So it's a, it's a great part of the guidelines. I like it. Uh, yes, I am familiar with them. I think all too often that you know screening is allowed to to uh, take the place of good sighting, um, and uh, I think there's I think there's yeah you know, some room for improvement. Thanks. Thank you. Jason, would you ask the next question, please? And I will ask uh, Linda to respond first. All right, I think this is something that Kevin has touched on, but uh, and something he's brought up in the campaign. But civility and is <laughs> civility lacking on the HTC? Um, at times, the members, certain members of the HDC get pretty frustrated with um, positions taken by designers or architects or property owners and with each other, frankly, because it's a subjective process. It was set up to be subjective. You have eight different opinions, five sitting on each case, and we're not going to all be sitting there singing a chorus of Kumbaya. You get nowhere if everybody's marching in lockstep. The only way to get to a acceptable conclusion on a project is for everybody to bring their understanding to the table, have a productive discussion, and get the applicant to want to buy into that discussion. Are we all ever going to get along? Absolutely not. And I frankly wouldn't want a board where everybody marched in lockstep because then you would not have any diversity of opinions or design. So. Could we be nicer to each other? Probably. Is that stopping the process? No. Uh, I think we already had this conversation. Uh, civility for me is letting people have their say. It's not interrupting. It's not telling them what to think. It's not telling them how something should look or shouldn't look. It's not saying I don't like it or I don't want it. It's hearing people out being thoughtful about your response and working together so that you know, we do what you know, Nantucketers have always done, neighbors solving their problems. Thanks. I have no problem being uh, a civil thinking person on the commission. I think in all the years I've been to hold back some of my thoughts and treat the applicant the way he should be treated. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'll ask Dan to ask this next question and Kevin to respond first, please. I'd like to follow up on, on Jason's question because I think there's a real issue out there with the HDC in terms of lack of respect on the part of the people that have to deal with them and the community generally. Not everybody, but widespread. And I think it relates to micromanagement. I think it relates to and they look, uh, a failure to rely on the staff for many of the routine decisions and a failure to cons uh, consult with the staff and, and take their opinions. And as has already been alluded to, the bickering which goes on amongst the members of the commission. Um, my question is, given that statement in essence, how do you think the HTC should respond to <coughs> gain the respect it as an elected body should have in the community. Thank you. I'm up. Yes. Well, Dan, I, th I think that's why we have change on boards. Uh, change is a good thing. It brings different points of view in. It, it uh, uh, happens all the time. Uh, and oftentimes, even whether it's on boards or whether it's in business, it helps to mix up the team and it helps to reset the clock. Um, one of the reasons that I got involved and that I'm, and that I'm here today is that um, I really believe in what the HDC does and I believe that it, that, that it has a lot of work to do to, to gain back the trust of the community and to gain back that respect. It's not going to be done overnight, um, but there's a lot of people that really believe in doing the right thing and I think it's time for a change. 
I myself believe the commission itself needs to be updated on a few ideas of parliamentary procedure. I believe the chairman runs the meeting. Whoever it is, they should run a tight ship. It's a little loose now and it should be tightened up and all the other members showing respect for one another. Thank you. I agree with what's been said. Um, back to your point about micromanagement and failure to rely on the staff. I um, tend to agree with you on that. And I'm on the HDC. Um, should we be picking battles on a window in the middle of Tom Nevers versus making sure that something on Main Street maintains its historic fabric? We have to pick our battles and many times we go off on tangents on properties that we probably shouldn't be spending as much time on. Relying on the staff, I'd like to see the staff take over some of these nitpicky things like fence co fences, colors, um, moving a window two feet that take up a substantial amount of HDC time every week. It, it creates an adversarial position because we're telling designers we don't like their plan. So there's a necessary evil and off we go into the sunset. Thank you, Linda. I'll ask John to respond first to this next one from Jason, please. All right, we touched on uh, you know, alternative energy uh, systems earlier, um, but maybe if you can give your personal feelings on, on solar panels and windmills um, near or on historic properties, whether how you view them personally. Is it a detriment to the historical integrity of some of the, the, the architecture, or is there an appropriate balance? Go back, go back to that, what you said halfway through about your appropriateness. Yeah, where is that? Wind turbines, solar, about wind turbines and solar. How do you make them work in the historic district? Right. Oh, on, 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 oh solar? Uh, yes. Uh, turbines, I believe, the, uh, if you're going to have them, you don't have to. Do, 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 oh, can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Now, they don't have to be as high as they are. I've looked into a lot of, uh, done study on them, where they are, different places around. and. The turbines, myself, there are different types of turbines. You have a propeller type, and you have a, like I would think they call it conical type. There's one, if you go out to the bridge in Madikett, Walla Barrett Bridge, look over on Esther Island, you'll see one up there working. And it, it's, it looks like a tall silver tube, but it's less conspicuous to see. And I, I think a lot of the, the propeller type should not be around. Uh, there are other ways. And as far as in the old historic area, there are ways of putting solar panels in, in yards. You can work them off the ground. They don't have to be up on the top of the roof somewhere. Yes, technology has to move in somehow, but we, it's our job, I believe, the commission to look into it and try to get most of them down as less visible as possible on the ground where they belong, and they still absorb the heat and make photoelectricity. Thank you. ensuring that the modern technology can make it into the old historic districts yet. It's, it's very, very tricky. If they're not visible, that's one thing, but it's very difficult not to make a windmill visible. So we haven't quite gotten there yet. Um, we're working mostly on the new technology being introduced outside of the old historic districts um, where we have a little bit more room to maneuver and we're having a windmill, uh, no matter what style it is, would be more appropriate. So. Trying to introduce it into the old historic districts is difficult. And that takes us back to something Dan said about double glazed windows in the old historic districts versus the single glazed. And that's been a big topic of discussion and we're not done with it yet. But I, I agree with new technology, just how to integrate it is tough. I would love to have a windmill in my yard and I would love to have solar panels, but it's simply not appropriate. And if, and, there are places out there, out here where they are, uh, but in the old historic district, I simply don't see that it's appropriate at all. We need to protect our architecture. Uh, you know, visitors and the tourist economy is huge here. People are coming here to uh, see a real town. Um, and uh, I think that's important to protect. 